Throughout its long history, the Missouri Valley Conference has been a progressive force in intercollegiate athletics. The MVC was founded in 1907 by a group of forward-thinking athletics administrators that included Dr. James Naismith, the inventor of the game of basketball, during his tenure as athletics director at the University of Kansas. Through more than a century of change that has included a total of 34 institutions in its membership, the Valley has built a great tradition of competitive success and strong campus leadership. MVC institutions were among the first to break the color barrier in college basketball with the recruitment of African-American student athletes in the 1950s and 1960s, many years before schools in other regions of the country follow suit. This early integration of MVC basketball programs played a major role in the conference becoming a national power, with Valley teams winning two national championships and advancing 11 teams to Final Fours from 1950 to 1969. In 1962, Cincinnati, the MVC regular season basketball champions, scored a historic first as the Bearcats opened the NCAA tournament title game against cross-state rival Ohio State with four black players in the starting lineup. Cincinnati defeated Ohio State in the national final to win a second consecutive NCAA championship. Just a year later, Loyola Chicago, an institution that would join the MVC a half century later, started four black student athletes against an all-white Mississippi State team in the second round of the NCAA tournament. This memorable showdown has been famously called the Game of Change due to the obvious racial overtones leading into the contest. The Ramblers went on to defeat MVC champion Cincinnati in the title game. Loyola's incredible run to the 1963 NCAA title undoubtedly sped the integration of college basketball. Missouri Valley institutions also made NCAA Division I history with the hiring of the first ever African-American head coaches in the sports of men's basketball and football. Illinois State's hiring of Will Robinson in 1970 as the Redbirds men's basketball coach was a monumental step that opened a coaching door in the sport. Robinson's debut as the first black Division I head basketball coach was a highlight in his brilliant career at both the high school and collegiate levels and later in his work as a scout in the NBA and in the NFL. In 1979, former MVC member Wichita State appointed Willie Jeffries to lead the Shocker football program making him the first black head football coach in Division I. Jeffries went on to a 29-year career as a head coach that included seven conference championships, three black college national championships, and induction into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2010. But progress in the integration of Missouri Valley athletics wasn't easily achieved. There were difficult struggles for black student athletes and coaches from their initial entry into the conference, mirroring the prejudice towards and mistreatment of persons of color in our country during that era. In 1951, Drake football student athlete Johnny Bright was a Heisman Trophy candidate in his senior year, following a great junior year in which he had set an NCAA record for total offense, passing and rushing for 2,400 yards. Heading into a game at NVC member Oklahoma A&M, now Oklahoma State, in late October, Bright was again the national leader in rushing and passing for the unbeaten Bulldogs, but a controversial and vicious blow to the face that broke his jaw on a play that he didn't even have the football ended his season. His injury led to the adoption of the face mask in college football. In the year after the incident, both Drake and Bradley withdrew from the MVC in protest when the conference failed to take any disciplinary action in the matter. However, both institutions were readmitted to the membership in 1955. Bright was ultimately selected in the first round of the NFL Draft by the Philadelphia Eagles, but instead elected to sign with the Calvary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League due to his uncertainty of how he might be treated in the NFL. He was later traded to the Edmonton Eskimos and eventually became the CFL's all-time career rushing leader. Following his retirement from football, he remained in Edmonton and was a junior high school teacher, coach, and principal, fondly remembered for his high character and mentoring.